Okay, we're here at Skipper and Clark with Small Boat Restoration, our little hobby adventure and our new Alcourt alcove. We wanted to talk for a minute about some of the uh, old style rudders and dagger boards from some of the early Alcourts and our earliest, I mean our earliest is 1953-ish uh, Alcourt sailfish named her Winnie. It's the 11 foot, seven inch model. And that's pretty much the only boat that uh, Alcourt was making at the time. But around the 1953 time frame, they expanded their line to include a longer sailfish. And then these boats uh, name changed from the sailfish to the sailfish 12. And then they had a sailfish 14 that was made out of wood. Later when the fiberglass boat showed up, they changed the sailfish line they named this the standard sailfish the uh, 11 the 13 foot 7 inch boat was called the super sailfish and the uh, fiberglass super was called the super sailfish mark ii now way back when 1947 they just had some seemed like whatever kind of rudder they came up with the basic hinge the uh, rudder of the day to get the sailfish on the water and 1952, 53 time frame, they came up with their patented rudder release mechanism. You see a lot of bronze hardware on the deck for a lot of rudders and it's got a patent number on it. A lot of people think that's the serial number for their boat, but that's the actual patent number. And the releasing mechanism is this uh, vertical hinge and on the boat there's a horizontal hinge plate which I think is hidden behind our ladder right now on the top deck. And then on the hull, there's a, uh, another uh, little keel plate uh, called a latch. Uh, I think there's another name for it. So it was uh, pinned in with this little bronze pin. There was a carriage bolt going through the deck and a spring plate on top. And if you hit something on the bottom, that would go to pull out of the bottom latch. That spring would compress and this could pop out, but it would still stay hinged to the boat. So that's the uh, patented rudder releasing mechanism that Alcourt came out with. This first, first rudder, we call it the elephant ear because, uh, I don't know, maybe it looks like an elephant ear to some folks. Very small, uh, effective on the 12 foot boat but not so effective on other boats and other issues. When we get into rudder and dagger board upgrades later, here's some of the differences. This is the shorter dagger board on the bottom, 31 inches. That works pretty well on this 12 footer, but not great. And because the wooden boats, they weren't, uh, they didn't have as deep of a keel. And by that, I mean from the deck down to the keel of the boat. There's not as much of a V in them as are on the fiberglass boats. So in 1960s, when the uh, fiberglass boats came out with the uh, deeper keels, they came up with this uh, 37 inch or so dagger board in the middle there with the blue and white stripe called the spoon tip. And that ran from about 1960s to the early 70s. So this, uh, use the magic finger, this dagger board on the bottom was what would have been original to this 12 foot sailfish. And the dagger board in the, on the top here came off of our 1965 fiberglass sunfish wave. So we use it on Winnie. We use the larger dagger board. She tacks better that way and points better. And uh, all of the boats have basically been upgraded one generation or more. Uh, but dagger boards, here's another upgrade came in the early 70s. To some it was an upgrade, but it's called, uh, ended up being called the shadow board. The uh, leading edge is uh, shaved a little bit as you get down towards the tip, so it's not quite rectangular. And some people even preferred still using the old spoon tip. And they so they called this dagger board was a former shadow of itself, hence the name shadow board. But it was long. So we use this on our super sailfish. Technically she's a sailfish 14 deluxe 
We'll talk about that in another video though. Uh, named Her name is Tracker, little red and white super sailfish we have. Uh, once again, she tacks better. And this is her old, old elephant ear rudder that uh, we still use on her. But we also have some spares uh, craftily hidden behind the ladder there that have more of a spoon tip design from the uh, from the 60s. One of them has a shorter vertical hinge plate so it'll fit on a sailfish or a wooden sunfish. The other one that you can see straight back through the ladder rungs has a longer vertical hinge plate that will only fit on the fiberglass sunfish because not only did the fiberglass sunfish have a deeper V on the keel, it also had a uh, taller transom. So we're going to spin you around to the left here over the top of our little sword runabout named Willow and go over and talk about some of the some more of the rudders we have that we use on our classic Alcorts. Here in their new home called the Alcourt Alcove. This is a 1953 Alcourt Sunfish we named Zip. She's um, a pre-production model. She's number 13 of 20 boats built for her family and friends of Alex and uh, Cortland. And uh, she's got a few unusual features that you don't see on some of the later boats, the long sweeping combing. And one of the big things that identifies her as one of the early, early boats are the big holes in the uh, bulkheads where I think their thoughts then were just, hey, uh, ventilation to keep the wood from rotting and they weren't so worried about swamping so later boats uh, you know just within a year or two they started making plugs for those bulkhead holes and uh, started then started sealing up the bulkheads entirely and putting uh, drains on the forward part of the pontoon and the aft part of the pontoon so we we're just leaving it as is and carrying the sponge with us. And if we don't go too off, too far offshore, we don't uh, really go out with some kind of other boat around in case we get out there. But it's not going to sink. It just might be, you might just be sailing with the hole partially submerged if you got water in there. So what we've done with the zip is we've upgraded her from that smaller dagger board to this is a Barrington board uh, developed by the uh, Barrett, Barrington Frostbiter fleet sometime in the 80s, I believe. And it's uh, kind of gone back to a rectangular shape, so there's more board. And then later boards, you'll see uh, kind of our uh, extension of this made out of uh, some type of gra glass, resin, plastic, fiber, plastic, resin. We don't know exactly what they're made of, but the white... Uh, I'll just call them plastic boards that you see with more of an airfoil shape uh, with more of the rudders that have more uh, streamlining than these things that just kind of tend to uh, just not quite handsomely craft their way through the water. And above it, uh, we have, uh, she's got a newer style rudder that has the spoon tip. She would have come with one of the elephant ears at one point, actually, this is not, this won't work on her. So I've got the rudder in the wrong place. Disregard, we just moved all this stuff in here. So what I've done here, my blooper, is this longer vertical hinge plate will not work on the wooden boat. So I've got it swapped. Uh, the other one in the back there is what's supposed to be up here. We'll spin you around to it. But the way she came to us with, was with this old style rudder that's been upgraded to have the uh, spoon tip blade on it but it's in uh, bad shape there's a bad uh, piece of rot and a crack up just underneath where the tiller attaches so we keep it to look at we might decide whether we can repair it someday Dutchman just to keep it uh, because it came with the boat but we can tell from the style of the blade that it's not original to 1953 so, but we'll keep it. Now let me spin you back around to the right again. 
If you look way over in the top right corner, there's a uh, upgraded spoon tip board with a little bit longer tiller and it's got the uh, shorter vertical hinge plate that'll fit on zip. So as soon as I'm done making this very informative video, except for having things in the wrong spots, we'll go uh, swap those into their correct places. And we'll back you up a little bit. Spin you around. If you're thinking about a classic uh, vintage runabout, we highly suggest thinking about putting a new motor on it or we're here, standing here looking at Willow. Put a new uh, 2015, new at the time, 25 horsepower Suzuki. It had tilt and trim and four stroke technology. So it starts and runs. And um, it's not nearly as much fun as dealing with the uh, mixing fuel and oil. And, but those motors run great too, so don't be scared away from them. But if you're in a place like we were that was a little remote and you needed that extra bit of reliability, then uh, this may be something to consider if you're thinking about getting into this scene. And last, since we're here, totally related to Alcourt Sunfish of the 19, and Sailfish of the 1950s, is the, uh, the Grumman Canoe. And uh, you can take your basic canoe, if you're bored, and add all of these pieces to it. Plus the sailing spars and booms and rigs and lines and riggings and make your very simple canoe very complicated. Adding a rudder, a mast step, leeboard bracket, a couple of leeboards, a gudgeon, a mast step. And then because, you know, you're having so much fun so far, you've got your uh, portage bracket. And you can put the 72 pound canoe with all of this stuff up on your shoulders and go for a walk through the woods. So skippers, uh, I'm sure, want to do that right away. So I better end up this video so I can get all of that set up for. So I hope y'all are doing great and uh, see another video soon, probably about just checking the next few days or a few hours. For one, talking a little bit about our 1959 Sorg and one specifically talking about the uh, canoe rigs for the uh, Grumman. Hope y'all are doing great. That's all we got for now.